My name is Greg from Pringles and we're here, I'm making this video to show you uh, what our new trucks look like. We've got our new uh, aluminum style truck. Um, this is the very first of its kind. It's 3 16 aluminum. Um, and then we've got our stainless steel truck right here. This is uh, all stainless steel, well, mostly stainless steel. And this is a truck that I'm going to make a video of here shortly, but for right now, um, you know, I'm just really here to show you that truck. Like I said, this one's all stainless, that one's all aluminum. Um, there's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences as well. But I'll make another video when this truck gets closer to uh, completion. So, this truck here, this being our new truck, a uh, couple differences I wanted to show you. And let me show you the fan first. Um, this is a 41 inch fan. This is the fan that we've used for many years. Um, most people are familiar with this fan. Um, it's a 41 inch fan that's in this and it's in our old trucks. The new truck, this one here, it's got a 30 inch fan. It's the same design, same exact design, but it's 30 inches as opposed to 41. So normally this fan runs at 1350 RPMs. That one runs at 1800 to 2000 RPM. Um, this one is uh, five and a half inches wide in here. Uh, that one there is seven inches wide, so you can move a little bit more air through it. Um, now, being a forward, or a, this is a forward curve fan, as you can see, the wells, it's a forward curve, helps to move the air a little faster so you get a high CFM number. And then uh, with the shroud on it, now most fans, uh, most of our competitors' fans, with the exception of uh, Harold's Power Bank, um, they just have blades that stick out here, and this shroud here, or this plate here, is not on there. The difference being, you know, what happens when um, you've got air moving through this fan, um, the, the air is forced to go through the fan. Now on our competitor's fans, you know, basically they've got these blades sticking out here without the shroud, and they're using the front of the fan housing as the, as the uh, basically, you know, the front of it. So, um, but what happens when you're, uh, when you've got air moving through there, if you put restriction to your airflow with restrictive hose, or once you connect it to the uh, system, the air instead of being forced to go through the blades can roll off over the uh, outer edge of the blade. What that does is it lowers your CFM. So um, they call that static pressure. So this fan design is going to have a higher static pressure than you know other designs out there. Um, so anyway, when you see other fans, you're going to notice they're normally different than this, but this actually is a better design for moving air. Anyway, I thought I would show you that. Now, over the years, we have had some issues with these fans cracking right here along this top. Um, it would crack right here where the weld is. It's rare, and in the five years that I've been here, we've only had a, I've only replaced two fans in the five years that I've been here, but it does happen. So what we've done, we put uh, this reinforcement on there. Ever since we put that reinforcement on there, um, you know, we put a five-year warranty on these things. Ever since we put that reinforcement on there, nobody's had a crack since. So, um, anyway, that's a, that's our fan design. And it really is, you know, you can use these fans not just for, you know, cleaning duct work or chimneys and all that. You can also use them to remove insulation. So, they are good for material handling as well. We've used them for insulation removal for years. So, moving on, this, uh, like I said, this is an aluminum style truck. Um, Everything you see on here is aluminum or stainless steel, with the exception of this ladder. Um, this ladder is steel. Um, we couldn't find a ladder rung material that was uh, uh, stainless steel that uh, was this narrow. Um, so we had to go with a fatter one and it got heavier. So we did go with steel, but it is powder coated. The one thing about this truck, it is all powder coated, which is nice. You know, powder coating as opposed to paint, uh, when you nick or you damage uh, paint, it tends to chip. Whereas powder coating, it just kind of dings it. It doesn't really chip it. Um, so it's a much more durable coating. Um, we really like it. You know, a couple of times, you know, we have hit this thing and, and you think, oh my gosh, did we, and you just don't chip it. it it's, it's just a totally different, it's like a plastic as opposed to a, a hard enamel. So it um, doesn't chip. Anyway, opening these doors. Now, our doors are a little different than our competitors' doors. You will find with our competitors, what they do is they make a door 
that is a sandwich door. So instead of just one panel, they've got a panel here and a panel on the back side of it. Um, it does make the door a little bit stronger, but these doors really are pretty strong. You're not going to have to worry about uh, this door being flimsy. It is 3 16th of Newton. Um, so what happens is when they do that, now you don't get any coating on this side of the uh, panel or on the back side of the panel. So if any water gets down in there, and it does over the years, now it starts to corrode. Now aluminum is not like uh, steel, it doesn't rust, but it still can corrode. So if you give it a uh, place for water to get in there and corrode it, that's, that's exactly what will happen. Um, and that's if you've seen you know, our competitors' trucks that have that style of door, they're usually rust out, rusted out down here. And even your aluminum doors, they may not rust out, but you might find some corrosion down here. Um, this does not have that. Um, another benefit of that is we put this, uh, uh, this uh, material here so that we can actually press our seals in. Um, you will find on our competitor's truck, they have a uh, seal that is taped to the door, excuse me, to the door jam. And the bad thing about that is it's, it's usually a sponge rubber and it gets torn real easy and a lot of times they're falling off. We've had, you know, caddy backs and fill walls here that use that type of a seal and a lot of times they're hanging down um, and they're falling off. And, you know, this seal is going to be here for many, many years to come. It's a hard rubber seal. You're not, we get these trucks back in after many, many years, and the seal just, it still looks like the day we put it in there. So you're not going to have to worry about replacing it. It's not going to be falling down. Anyway, uh, that's one of the benefits of our doors over our competitors' doors. And we think you'll really like it. Uh, we know we do. Now, if you can come on over here, you'll see inside here you've got uh, two dirt boxes, and I'll be showing you those uh, a little better here in a moment. Um, there's two dirt boxes running down the side of each truck, and I'll show you the good things about that. Um, now, with our truck, we like to drop down back here so that you get even more hose storage, okay? Um, a lot of trucks just come back straight. By dropping down in there, you get more hose storage. Um, <clears throat> you can store a lot of hose in here, uh, as opposed to you know some of our competitors' trucks. Uh, there's more hose storage. Also, all of our trucks are going to have access to the suction inlet from both sides of the truck. Um, we've seen other trucks, and we've actually got a caddy back here right now that uh, does not have that. So when you want to attach your suction hose, you have to climb into the back of the truck, which is just ridiculous in my opinion. So we've made it standard on all our trucks that you will have a suction inlet tee. Um, I can't imagine anybody would want it the other way. But if you do, let us know. We will take that out and you can go ahead and do it the way you have it in the past. So, um, anyway, uh, that's a standard option, so it's not really an option. It's standard. All right, moving on. Now, uh, all of our lights are all LED. Uh, you will find that all the lights on the inside, all of our marker lights and our tail lights, everything is LED. I guess I forgot to say that, but... Uh, Anyway, like I said, you have suction, you have access to your suction inlet from both sides, right there. Now this customer wanted an 8 inch suction inlet, but you can also do a 10. Um, either way, just let us know when you order. Now, uh, first off, I'm going to open the doors here. You just kind of fold those off to the side. And then you can open your doors. You can open your doors. We're going to make a handle to do this, but for right now I'm just going to use this. Uh, just easily that up and open your door. Now, I'm going to show you how to stuff your bags. So, we put this little step ladder in here. Um, you know, our competitor has a, a fold down ladder down here, or a fold down step down there. Um, so you can just kind of throw your bags up there. The bad thing about doing that is, you know, your bags start to fill up with dust and debris. And the next thing you know, you may have found a way to keep from having to go up on top, but then you're going to find yourself going up there anyway just to dump all the dust and debris out of the bags. That way you can get better suction. Um, if you just leave all that dust and debris up in there, it's going to cut down on your suction, and uh, so you'll find you have to go up there anyway. So what we did, you go ahead and pull these steps out, fold it down, and real easily get right up there. Say your bags are 
hanging down when you get done, shut the truck off, you can just dump all your dust and debris out while you're shucking the stick, sticking the bag back in. Um, you can easily reach all these bags. You know? Easily reach them, stuff them down in the hole. That way, when you stuff them down in the holes, they get rid of their dust and debris, as opposed to just loading up and loading up and loading up and, and therefore becoming less porous and you know, reducing your suction. Hopefully with this truck, you will never have that uh, as a problem. Now, this truck is not finished. We do have one thing that has not been installed yet here, um, and that is the, uh, there will be a strap hanging down, um, probably attached over here somewhere, so that you can actually reach that. I'm tall enough to reach it, but there will be something. So, pull it down, gets down, just kind of pull these down, it's done, and there you go. Now this is all stainless steel, this is a very nice little step ladder, we think you'll really like it, we know you will, this really is nice. Get done, just pull it up, push it in, pull those down, you're done. Now like I said about uh, these trucks, all have these barrels in them nowadays, so much nicer than having a all the dirt and debris out of them. Um, in the past, you had to rake the dirt and debris out, and it would be getting on your pants, and you'd have to wear a mask, and, and nobody wanted to do it. You know, whoever drew the short end of the stick that day and had to clean them out was miserable, hated it. So, these barrels basically, you just undo this lid, pull the barrel out, dump it, put it back in there, put the lid back on, you're done. Oh, it's so nice, everybody loves it. Anyway, um, on. come on over here and you can get a look inside the, uh, this is where all the workings of the truck are. So in here you're going to see our two dirt boxes. We've got a dirt box here and a dirt box over there. Um, everything from that fan housing blows into this dirt box and then we've got this hose here going across to the other dirt box so that you can utilize um, the bags on that side as well. Um, the more bags you get, the more uh, airflow you can get, so you've got bags on both sides. And you've got a step ladder on that side as well to get up on top and close, uh, stuff your bags as well. So, now, our fan housing in this truck, actually, you know, on our competitor's truck, we noticed that the fan, the, they basically just have a hose that goes from the fan housing to the dirt box. Um, we wanted to make sure that our fan housing actually protruded into the dirt box. That way you wouldn't have any dust and debris hitting the hose. Um, over the years on our old trucks, we would actually do insulation removal. And what would happen is, as dust and debris blew out, and we would actually hook a hose from our truck to a uh, dumpster. And what would happen is, um, the next thing you know, some debris would come through that fan and it would hit the hose and it would put a hole in it. Um, so we saw that as a, pro a potential problem, so that's why we have this fan housing protruding into the dirt box. The fan housing does not actually touch the dirt box though. We do have a, uh, it is actually kind of protrudes into it, but it does not touch it. And then there is a hose that actually seals it off so none of the dust and debris gets in here. Um, so anyway, we feel like we've avoided a potential problem in the future. Now all of our trucks have Quincy compressors. If you want a different compressor, we'll be more than likely, we'll be more than happy to put it in there. Um, but Quincy's have proven themselves to be extremely reliable over the years. They are the best compressor on the market. Um, this one here is a Quincy HP. This thing's good for up to 450 psi. Now nobody uses 450 psi when uh, cleaning ductwork. But you do, you know, some customers do use more than 200, and a lot of the compressors out there are really only rated for 175. Um, but if you want, you know, this is a 200 psi air tank. We can get up to a 300 psi air tank as an option, and then you can more, you can better utilize the power of this compressor. Um, and the 300 psi tank is. Uh, like I said, it's an option. They're, you know, you can't just buy a 300 PSI tank off the rack, so they are special made. Um, so they are more expensive, so it is an option that you will have to pay for. But if you want to run, you know, your, your truck at over 200 PSI, you will need to get a higher, uh, uh, higher PSI compressor, or air tank. Um, you can see our LED lights up in there. Um, they're all LED strips, so you're not going to have to worry about damaging them. Um, you can hit those and it's really not going to hurt them. So, Anyway, 
Now, this is storage here. This truck's actually gonna have a hose reel right here. Um, it's not just going to be, uh, uh, it's not gonna be totally useless space here. Um, you can put whatever you want in here. But this customer's actually getting a hose reel right here, so. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> Up here in this compartment, we got a lot of storage in here. If you wanna put a portable in here, you want to put shelving. The customer that's getting this truck is actually going to have a whole bunch of shelving in here. He's going to have shelving on this side. He's going to have a portable in here, ladders in here. He's going to have mm -hmm. shelving up there on that side, the over top of his portable. Um, so, you know, with this truck, you really can get a lot of uh, uh, shelving and storage in here. Um, I went and took this truck up to the Detroit area and showed it to a bunch of people. And they were all surprised at how much storage you actually got in a truck that's under 10,000 pounds. Me put on a Ford Transit, you can keep it under 10,000 pounds, being aluminum, and these trucks being lightweight. You know, stay under 10,000 pounds. Now this truck here is uh, split shaft driven. As you notice, there were no extra engines in there. So what happens is, the, it's run off of the engine. So what we have is uh, the drive line that comes off the back of the transmission goes into this box, and then there's another drive line that goes from that box back to the wheels. And what happens is when you want to run the unit, you disengage the wheels, and there's a PTO attached to the side of it. And then you engage the PTO, and now instead of turning the wheels, it's turning your unit. Okay, um, that's the way this one works. Now this truck right now weighs in at 7,900 pounds. So <coughs> Excuse me. At 7,900 pounds, this customer is going to be under the 10,000 pound limit when he loads it completely full of stuff. And that's exactly what he plans on doing. Um, so, 7,900 pounds, um, that's much lighter than the Isuzu, the stainless steel truck that I showed you before. Um, but in the future, uh, this truck is also going to come with a Kubota diesel or gas engine. So, you'll have the option of a split shaft or a PTO or uh, a Kubota diesel or gas engine. Um, the next truck that we're gonna build, this one right here, is actually waiting to waiting for all the parts. It's gonna actually be a Kubota diesel or gas uh, 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 engine design. So as soon as we get that truck out, we will make a video of that one as well so you can see you know, what the other options are. Um, Kubota gas or diesel engine should be very reliable. Um, we're really excited to see how that one turns out. Uh, we're happy with this one. When we first started this one, you know, when you start something new, it's exciting, and it's also nerve-wracking, and we feel like we really knocked it out of the park. This is a really nice truck, and everybody we've showed it to so far really likes it. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so, we think you will too. And, I, you know, in seeing this video, I'm sure you're going to have questions, and I look forward to answering those. Um, and I hope that you, if you watch this video and you have them, you don't hesitate to call me because um, I'd really love to answer them. Um, and I look forward to talking to you and possibly meeting with you. You can always feel free to come to our shop and check them out if you're anywhere in the area. Um, if not, hopefully I will be you know, driving you know, a truck to your area someday. So uh, anyway, I hope you like the video. If you have any questions, make sure you call me. I look forward to talking to you. And uh, anyway. It's exciting. Hope you like it. Hope you like the video. And thank you for watching.